Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Trade Station Masterclass. My name is Jesus Nava. I'm the Director of Client Training and Education for Trade Station Securities. I am joined by my colleague Manolo. He's going to be moderating the chat today and sharing some links as we go through the presentation. I want to welcome everyone to this presentation. This is a masterclass series, and the category of this session is on technical analysis. Uh, we're going to focus on a study called the Ichimoku Cloud. It may be familiar to many of you. Uh, some of you may be new to this indicator. Uh, you may be using it in your analysis. A lot of times we don't know the intricacies and the details about uh, studies. So this session is dedicated to understanding uh, how Ichimoku Cloud is created and uh, the way that it you know, pulls up on the chart and all the different inputs that we can modify in the study if we're using it. But before we jump into today's presentation, let's go through some of the disclosures. Uh, keep uh, in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about is for educational purposes only. Uh, these are not recommendations of trade station. Also that active trading is not suitable for everyone and past historical performance is no guarantee of future results. We have um, all the details on these disclosures right there on this link, www.tradestation.com forward slash important dash information. And you can see that Manolo has shared that link right there in the chat for anybody that, um, that wants to read more on the details about the disclosures. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about the Ichimoku cloud from um, defining what the study is, where it came from, and uh, the different calculated lines that we have in there, okay? What is the Ichimoku cloud? Well, first of all, is a collection of technical ideas based on price channel analysis. Once we get into understanding the different plots of the Ichimoku cloud, you'll see the relationship between Ichimoku cloud and the price channel studies. A lot of times we look at the Ichimoku cloud and uh, we are a little bit overwhelmed because of all the different lines that we see on the chart, but it's not that difficult to understand and decipher where all the lines come from. But yes, it's all based on price channel analysis. It was designed by Goichi Hosoda in the late 1960s. So we can understand, you know, from the get-go that Ichimoku Cloud was an, a study that, you know, took a lot to calculate back then uh, when it was created uh, without, you know, the availability of advanced trading platforms, a lot of the calculations of the Ichimoku cloud had to be done by hand. Not only the calculations of the Ichimoku cloud, but the collection of you know the open high, low, and closing prices of every bar in order to calculate the Ichimoku cloud values. So it's a very, or back then, it was a very intensive uh, pr um, process to get the Ichimoku cloud on a chart. Nowadays, it's just as simple as going to a menu, looking for Ichimoku Cloud and adding it to your chart. But the challenge at this moment is understanding where those values come from and how they're calculated. It's also known as the Ichimoku Kinko Yo. I'm not sure if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, but uh, the Ichimoku Kinko Yo uh, translates to one glance, one look equilibrium or balanced chart. So the intention here is to find a study that pretty much gives you everything you need in order to make a trading decision. Of course, this is not to discount <laughs> any of the studies that are part of the trade station platform or any of the studies that are popular in the industry. But when this indicator was created, it was created with that intention so that you would have all the resources available to make a decision as to where the markets were headed. It helps you identify support and resistance levels, price momentum, and trend direction. Now, those are three different things, support and resistance, price momentum, and trend direction. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an all-inclusive indicator that provides you a way to um, interpret the markets. This is what the Ichimoku Cloud Indicator looks like on the trade station platform. By the way, this is just a screenshot part of the PowerPoint. But one thing that I forgot to mention is that the information that I'm discussing right now is part of the PDF 
that I'm going to share with everyone here. So Manolo, please um, share that link. There it is. Uh, you can click there to download the PDF with the information that I'm sharing with everyone. And inside the PDF, you're going to find this screenshot as well, which identifies all the different lines of the Ichimoku cloud. But if this is the first time that you look at an indicator, like the Ichimoku cloud is just going to look like a, a whole bunch of spaghetti that was thrown <laughs> at the graph and it stuck to the chart because there are a lot of lines. There are a lot of plots and a lot of times, you know, it could be a little bit overwhelming, but let's go ahead and break it down and understand what each one of these elements, you know, represent. Uh, these are the labels or the names of the plots that we're going to be using today. Uh, from the beginning, we're going to, we're going to start at Tenken and Kijun, which are the first two calculated values. Then we're going to take a look at the cloud is um, created using two lines that are pretty much intersecting each other. Um, and we are going to take a look at the Chiku line, which is this blue line that you see here. And of course, you know, we have the bullish cloud and the bearish cloud. We're going to get to the trading signals and uh, what the Ichimoku cloud is trying to tell the trader, you know, the, the different concepts that you can utilize to make, it, to make decisions in your own trading. So let's start with the calculations. Tenken, or the conversion line, it's a nine bar high and a nine bar low price channel divided by two. There's two uh, price channel calculations that are taken here at the very beginning. These are the two first lines of the Ichimoku cloud, the Tenken and the Kijun. They're both calculated very similarly. One is more of a short term price channel, that's the nine bar, and the other one is a longer term price channel. This is like the mid um, price channel with a 26 bar calculation. But I'm highlighting the two lines because they are very similar in their calculation. It's just taking the, the, the period's highest high and lowest low and then dividing it by two. Let me go ahead and transfer over to trade station so that you can see that clearly on a chart. And that way we'll talk about how to include or how to add the Ichimoku cloud to a chart on the trade station platform. Let me go over here to my trade station. I'm going to open up a chart analysis. In fact, in this example, I'm gonna open up two, but um, let's go ahead and start with one. I'm gonna change this chart to a daily. Um, somewhere in the PDF, we also talk about, you know, the Ichimoku cloud being designed for weekly bars when it was first uh, created, uh, but we can use the Ichimoku cloud on any time frame. Uh, some time frames, of course, are going to be a little bit more reliable, and the longer term time frames seems to seem to have better results when you're using the Ichimoku cloud. But again, it's something that you can test. It's something that you can you know grab yourself and apply it to any time frame that you want to look at and see how it benefits your trading. So in this case, I have a chart. It doesn't really matter what symbol we're using. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up a chart of Apple. All right, this is Apple on a daily time frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the Ichimoku indicator. This is what usually happens inside of the trade station platform when you try to use the Ichimoku cloud. I click on add study, look at the list of studies that we have available, and Ichimoku cloud is going to be included in your list of study. Is right here, Ichimoku cloud. When I add it and I click OK here, it's going to appear as if nothing had happened. I mean, you look at my chart and no study was added. But if you look at, at uh, the Windows taskbar, there is an events log window that was generated. This is not very user friendly because <laughs> we would expect if you add an indicator like this to automatically be added to the chart. But um, there are some technical aspects of the in, in the way that this indicator was created in TradeStation that you have to be aware of and you have to modify your chart in order to see the indicator plotted correctly. As you can see, the events log was triggered. Um, you find it in the Windows taskbar and it says right here, the study, this is the event information. The study attempted to reference too many bars to the right of the chart. And it, it is it suggests that we adjust the properties of this study. What is happening is that the Ichimoku cloud projects into the future. It's really interesting because the 
information or the plots that are part of the Ichimoku cloud is somehow intended to give you an overview of what happened in the past, what's happening in the present, and what's happening in the future. So this future portion means that the indicator is going to project some calculations into the future. Um, and that calculation requires at least 26 bars into the future. In this case, we're looking at a daily bar, so that means 26 days into the future. The chart doesn't add that space automatically, so you have to manually add the space so that the indicator fits. If you look at my chart right now, you can see that the space here to the right, it's um, there's a little space there. In fact, by default, we provide you five bars of space to the right, but it's not enough for the Ichimoku cloud, which needs 26 bars. So in order for you to fix this, you have to add more spaces to the right. Where do you do that? Quickly, I can double click on the background. That's my, my shortcut. Double click on the background. It takes you to customize window. And in the general tab, you find this box that says space to the right. Mine is set to 10 by default, just because I like a little bit more space to the right. So if you do, if you like more space to the right of the last bar, then you can play around with this setting. A lot of users like their bars stacked right against the price scale on the right-hand side. So you can just set that to one if you'd like. Uh, but it, in the Ichimoku cloud case, we have to add at least 26. So I'm gonna put in 26 in there. Um, if we offset the Ichimoku cloud more than 26 bars into the future, then we have to come back here and modify this. But um, it is a little bit, you know, um, annoying to have to do this since it's one of the default indicators of trade station. But just remember that you have to add this space to the right in order for the indicator to work. I'm gonna click okay. You can see how that provides me more space here to the right. The study though, since I added it, it is on the chart, but it's turned off. So I don't, ha I don't have to add it again. If I go here to the studies menu, I can just go to edit studies. You can see that the Ichimoku cloud is already added, but if you notice the status here is turned off. So with the indicator highlighted in blue, I can just click on the status button here on the right and turn the status on. And if I click on close, the indicator then shows on the chart because it has enough space to the right in order to draw those future calculations on that area. All right. Hopefully that is clear and that is not too much trouble for you to add the Ichimoku cloud to your charts. Okay, but let's go ahead and add another chart to this workspace because I want to compare, you know, the Ichimoku cloud to the price channel study so you can see the relationship. I'm going to turn this into a daily chart as well. And I'm going to go here to studies, add studies. And let me just add a simple price channel right here. All right, let's put this um, charts side by side. All right, so we have the price channel on the left and we have the Ichimoku cloud on the right. What we are talking about, in fact, let me go back here to my PowerPoint. These two lines, the Tenkan and the Kijun, these are two lines that are taking a look at the price channel values on a nine bar, on a nine bar period and a 26 bar period and then dividing it by two. Let me go back here to my trade station. Keep in mind the two names, Tenken and Kijun, because um, when we go here to the trade station platform, and um, we're gonna use those names in the calculation. When I click on the background of my chart and I hold my mouse pointer right here on the most recent bar, you can see the calculated values right there. You can see Tenken, you see Kijun, you see the Senku span A and the Senku span B. Again, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in Japanese, so I'm not sure if that's the way that you pronounce those, but I'm just going to yeah, say it like that, okay? So those are the two lines that we're going to concentrate on right now, which is Tenken and Kijun. And for me not to have to continuously hold my mouse button down in order to see those values, I'm going to go to the data menu and click on data window. The data window is this little box that 
floats on your TradeStation platform and provides you information on the bar that you click. So if I click on this most recent bar, then, or if I hover over the most recent bar, you can see that it gives me the information on the Tenkan and the Kijun. Now, of course, um, the values are gonna change as I hover over the chart. So if you want that information to stay on the current bar, um, I can use this functionality. I, I don't show this a lot, but in the settings menu, there's a pointer tracking functionality that allows you to anchor your clicking on a particular bar. So if I go here and I turn this on for window, I can click on the current bar and you can see that the values stay there. Now, if I move my cursor around, you know, the values on my the data window don't change. So that's uh, very useful if you wanna concentrate on the values on a particular bar. So use that settings menu, pointer tracking, and enable it for the window so that it stays right there. I'm gonna make this data window a little bit bigger so that I can keep an eye on the 10 can and the key June. Now we did say that the 10 can is a nine bar price channel. So I'm gonna come over here to my, to my price channel and I'm gonna make this a nine. All right, so this is a nine period channel. Of course, I mean, I turned it on for the window, so the pointer tracking I'm talking about. So it's gonna be on on any window that you activate. So since I'm clicking on this chart, you can see how the anchor is now on this bar, which is okay. I can always go back to the chart where the Ichimoku is, but I can see here the high and the low of this nine bar price channel. Let me bring up the calculator. And I'm not sure if you know this. I mean, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I'm a, I'm a fan of understanding the calculated values. I think it provides you a different perspective on the indicator. So you're not just relying on some random lines that are telling you to trade, you're understanding where the line comes from and why is it telling you that you're bullish or bearish? There's gotta be an understanding of where the lines come from and how they're calculated. So I'm a fan of going and diving deeper into the line and making sure that I know where it comes from. That gives me a, a little bit more insight on the study. A, a lot of people prefer not to understand the intricacies of the study or the formulas. They just rely on what the indicator is trying to tell them. But I think it provides the trader a better perspective about how the indicator should be interpreted. So this nine bar price channel is using these two prices, 182.34. So I'm gonna do 182.34. It's gonna add the low 170.97 plus 170.97. It gives you that value, and then I'm gonna divide that by two. That's the formula. So now we get this value of 176.65, but the calculated value that we're looking at here, the 10 can line, which is the yellow line, is just looking at the highest high and the lowest low for the past nine bars, dividing it by two, and that's what you get here as a yellow line. The same thing happens here. Let me turn this tracking off. All right, and uh, I'm just gonna move this along the chart so we can get a full picture on the chart. All right, so yellow line, nine bar, price channel. The pink line or the magenta line, same calculation, but instead of looking at the short-term nine bars, it's looking at a mid-term period, which is a 26 bar. In this case, the 26 would be 26 trading days. You're going to see that the, the calculated parameters of the Ichimoku cloud uses 26 and 52, implying that it's used more on a weekly basis because 26 weeks would give you six months of historical data or half a year. And of course, the 52 week will give you a full year uh, price channel, but you can use it on daily and even intraday if you think that it benefits your trading. So those two lines, short-term versus mid-term. Then what happens? Let's go over here to my PowerPoint. We calculate two additional lines, Senku A and Senku B. 
Now, Senku A is just taking the very first two lines, adding them together, and dividing it by two. So let's go back here to my trade station. So it's taking the values of these two lines. Let me see if I can get um, the pointer tracking again. All right, and I'm gonna go here and bring up the data window one more time. All right, let's take a look. And I'm going to bring up my calculator. So what this is doing is taking the Tenkan and the Kijun. So the yellow value plus the magenta value. Let's go ahead and see if we get some results here, <laughs> some good results. I know that in the past calculations have been using the calculator and they don't match, but this time let's go ahead and see. 177.51, and I'm adding the 174.98, 174.98 divided by two, 176.24, which is the span A, but not on the current bar, on this future bar. So let's go ahead and check. Yeah, 176.25. The issue with the line is that it's offset to the future. So if you guys notice, my calculated value was 176.24, which is right here. You know, it's rounded up a penny, 176.25, which is that blue line that you see here. Uh, what the Ichimoku cloud does is that that calculated value is moved over or offset into the future. So you have to reference, you know, this value on the right-hand side. That's where the blue line gets calculated. It looks at adding the two first lines, the Tenkan and the Kijun, dividing it by two, and it gives you that blue line. So that's the first line of the cloud. The second line of the cloud, which is this orange line, it's this, 52 bar high plus the 52 bar low divided by two. So now we're looking at a longer term price channel, and then that determines that other line, which is the top and the bottom of the cloud. So you can see already that we're looking at a short term, a mid term, and a longer term all in one chart. Hence, you know, the definition of the Ichimoku cloud as being an all inclusive, all, all at a glance um, market type of indicator. And then we have the Chiku, which is the last plotted line of the Ichimoku cloud, which is the closing price plotted 26 days into the past. Looking at the trade station chart, this is what it looks like. Let me get rid of this and get rid of the pointer tracking as well. So the Ichimoku cloud would be this cyan line that you see on the chart. It is just the closing price moved over to the past. And that's our past component of the Ichimoku. At the very beginning, we said that the Ichimoku cloud provides you a past calculation, a present calculation, and a future calculation. So let's go ahead and recap. The past calculation is the Chiku line, which is just the closing price offset to the past. The present calculation is the Tenkan and the Kijun, which are happening on the current bar based on the nine bar, price channel and the 26 bar, you know, price channel. So short term versus midterm. And then the cloud, which is calculated based on that, you know, short term and the midterm, but in connection with the 52 bar price channel is what generates the cloud. And that cloud is offset to the right 26 bars into the future. Very interesting. And what we're looking at is how the price right now relates to all of these components, how the price right now relates to the Chiku line, which is the one in the past, how it relates to what's happening between the Tenken and the Kijun, which is the yellow and the magenta, and how it relates to the cloud, where it is. Is it above the cloud, below the cloud, in the cloud? I mean, those are different concepts and different analysis ideas that you can find in the Ichimoku cloud. So let's go ahead and take a look at some signals. But before, let's go ahead on some basics. All right. First, we talked about this. It was designed for weekly charts, but it can also be used with daily or even intra 
day intervals. Price bars above the cloud is bullish. That's one of the main basic concepts of the Ichimoku. And if the price bars are below the cloud, they're bearish. Going back to my trade station, we can see how the prices of Apple are below the cloud. So we are in a bearish mode for Apple. That's what that means. The longer prices stay above or below the cloud, the stronger the trend. So how long has Apple been below the bars or below the cloud? It's been a while below the cloud since this bar right here. This is um, September 6th, 6th, where the price went inside the cloud. You know, it's been under the cloud since then. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other basic elements. The cloud tries to identify levels of support and resistance. So passing through the cloud is considered neutral. And that's what happened right here when the price bar entered the cloud. This is a neutral period. Uh, so below the cloud, bearish. Above the cloud, bullish. Inside the cloud, neutral. Tenkan and Kijin cross crossovers identify new bullish or bearish momentum bias. So what we're looking for is for these two lines to cross. We noticed that they crossed a few days ago on October 12th, and we can see that that's just a bullish signal in this case because the nine, which is the short-term period, is crossing over the, um, the slope. Now we're gonna look at other components because even though this is considered a bullish signal, notice where it happened. When the prices or the price bars are below the cloud, which is considered, you know, bearish. So a lot of times we're going to get signals that are contradicting and they have to be analyzed further. But it does tell you that if you get a bullish signal, if this crossover had happened above the cloud, it means that the Ichimoku cloud is giving you a stronger bullish signal because of where it happened. But in this case, um, we're looking at a weak signal. I think we're going to go into those details in the next slide and I'm just getting ahead of myself. Uh, the Chiku above the price bar is bullish and below is bearish. Okay, that's the Chiku line is the one that is offset into the past uh, 26 bars too. Let's go ahead and take a look at some signals. So this is looking at the Tenkan and the Kijun with crossovers on the Chiku as the filter. So take a look at the bullish signal. Tenkan crosses over Kijun and Chiku is above price bars. And the bearish signal, Tenkan crosses under Kijun and Chiku is below price bars. So that's um, what's happening when we use the Chiku line as a confirmation for these signals. We can also use the cloud. The cloud seems very interesting and that's what's next here on this PowerPoint. Here it is. So conversion line Tenkan, let's just call it the Tenkan. Let's not, or give it more names, the Tenkan and the Kijun. When those crossovers happen in relationship to the cloud, we have a strong bullish signal and we have a weak bullish signal. It's what we talked about just a moment ago. The crossover between Tenkan and Kijun, which are these two lines right here, the yellow and the magenta, those crossovers happening in relationship to the cloud. So by looking at this signal that was generated by the Ichimoku cloud, we can identify this as a weak signal because it's happening under the cloud. And as we said earlier, being under the cloud just means that we are in a bearish mode. And the same happens uh, on the bearish signal. If the Tenkan crosses under Kijun below the cloud, strong bearish signal. But if it happens above the cloud is a weak signal. Uh, for example, right here, uh, I'm sure you guys see my cursor right here on the chart. We see that back in March 3rd, the, we had a cross under. We can see how the short term, which is the yellow line, crossed under the midterm. This is a bearish signal. But notice where it happened. The price bars were above the cloud, so a contradicting signal. And of course, we have to look at the signal a little bit closer. Not only that, not only are the bars above the cloud, but notice how 
the Chico line is also pointing upward. So we have two uh, lines of the Ichimoku cloud giving us a bullish momentum. So the signal is considered a weak one. And notice what happened to the price after that. You know, this was just momentary. We had the crossover again onto the top side. You can see the yellow crossing over the magenta again. Of course, proving that the bullish signal was stronger. We have a cloud breakout signal. A bullish signal is when the price enters the cloud and breaks upper wall upward. And then price enters the cloud and breaks the lower wall downward. So what this is looking for is for the price bars and how they relate to the cloud. So um, again, a different signal. We're not looking at the Tenken and the Kijun. We're looking at how the price bars, in this case, the candlesticks, are behaving in relationship to the cloud. Some areas, you know, where we have this price bars entering the cloud, we already said that that's more of a neutral area. But when we have this strong breakout to the downside, we have this very strong downward red candle. It broke the bottom of the cloud. This is a strong, you know, bullish signal to the downside. Of course, the price is kind of, uh, you know, moved to the downside a little bit, but then it, they, they, they rebounced back up. But um, those are the other signals that you can identify on the Ichimoku cloud is whenever the price bars cross over to the top side, meaning bullish, and when the price bars cross to the downside, where is a bearish signal. We have a cloud crossover. This is the Senku span A crosses Senku span B. All right, this looks at how the clad, how the cloud is behaving in itself and price bars are above the cloud. So we have also strong and weak signals on this slide. The strong ones and are when the signal is confirmed by where the price bars are in relationship to the cloud. Let's go back here and take a look. So what, what this signal is looking for is when the cloud inverses from a bullish mode to a bearish mode. So you see the two lines on the cloud crossing and the cloud changing colors. Not only that, but we're looking at that crossover and where it happens in relationship to the candlesticks. So in this particular case where we had this bearish crossover on the cloud, this bearish crossover was happening above the bars. What does that mean? Let's go back here to our PowerPoint. So when we had the this the, in this case it was the senku crosses from above to the downside so we have the bullish to the downside mm -hmm. and price bars are below the cloud in this case the price bars are below the cloud so this is a bearish signal so we have a bearish signal on the cloud because it's switching directions and the fact that the price bars are below mean that that's a strong bearish signal. If this crossover had happened below the candlesticks, then it would be a, a weak signal. So where do we see that? We see that, let's go back here and find an area where we had a switch from blue to orange. See, right here, we had a, a not a very clear signal because from a bearish type of setting, because the cloud was bearish and we had the bars below, we had a bullish crossover, but it happened, you know, while the bars were below the cloud. So that was a weak signal. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, well, the, where the signals of the Ichimoku cloud have to be aligned. So yes, you have multiple lines here providing you multiple signals. And the understanding of the Ichimoku provides you this way of aligning all the signals to identify the signals that are strong and the ones that are weak. Um, in the last few minutes of class, let's go ahead and take a look at this study, but on radar screen, because it does provide you additional help. Let me go over here to a new workspace, go to apps, and open up radar screen. I always, you know, introduce radar screen as a tool that allows you to do exactly what we just did on Apple, 
but do it on hundreds of symbols simultaneously. So that, of course, provides much more power in your ability to identify trading opportunities. I'm going to add the NASDAQ 100. I use that as, a, as an example many times because it's a good size of symbols. All right, let me scroll to the top. I'm going to remove the top two rows, which is a label in the index itself. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the Ichimoku cloud. So this is calculating the Ichimoku cloud on 100 symbols at once. Let me add it. I'm going to move it down so it's all the way at the very end of my columns. And then it adds everything here to the right. Now, I'm going to remove a few columns here so that we can condense the view. I'm going to delete the bid ask high and the low. Okay, so this is my study. You can see that the Ichimoku cloud is this big monster on the right-hand side that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten subheaders, which is a lot, a lot to view. Now, from a spreadsheet perspective, there may be a lot of things that you don't really need. I don't need the calculated value of Tenken and Kijun. I also don't need Chiku because this other column here at the very end is giving me the Chiku direction as to where it's headed. And here, the calculated values for the cloud I don't need because this indicator is also giving me where the prices are in relationship to the cloud. So let me go ahead and do some cleanup. And you can do this in your radar screen as well. Um, hiding columns is something that I do a lot if I don't need them. And I'm going to hide all these columns except for the last three, which is what are giving me the signals of the Ichimoku cloud. So I'm going to right click, go to studies, and you find the show hide plots. I'm going to start with Tenken. And the right click, studies, show hide plots. I wish it would stay here until I unchecked everything that I don't need, but it's not going to be terribly long for you to disable all those columns that you don't need. All right, right click, studies, show hide, Senku B, right click, studies, show hide plots, the A cloud. Right-click, Studies, Show High Plots, the B Cloud. So this is what I need. I need the trend direction. I need the price location. And I need the Chiku direction. This is giving you a lot of the signals of the Ichimoku in color and in text format. Uh, some of these texts are not legible. I'm not sure why they changed the colors of the Ichimoku Cloud. For example, right here for... This symbol, AZN, I don't kind, I mean, I kind of make out, it says here above cloud, but it's uh, it's like a color white over a baby blue and I, it's hard to see. Now you can change the colors if you want. Uh, I'm gonna right click on the Ichimoku cloud, go to studies and edit the Ichimoku cloud for all symbols. And I can say for the colors, my price location, make the font maybe a dark, maybe let's make it black. And I'm gonna click okay. So this, of course, it's a little bit more clear, but you can see how this tells you which symbols are above the cloud, which ones are below the cloud, which ones are in the cloud, and which ones are giving you a new above. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the differences here. Let me go ahead and uh, first of all, resize this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this chart where my Ichimoku cloud is, right click, uh, copy the window. I'm going to go here to this workspace where the Ichimoku cloud is. I'm going to right click and paste the window right here. All right. Uh, also, this is interval. Highlight all the symbols here. Time frame daily. Let me go ahead and link these two together. And let's take a look at some of the things that this is identifying. Uh, for Airbnb, the trend direction, it says down. You know, uh, the trend direction is identified as where the Tenkan and the Kijun are. What's their relationship? And you can see that the yellow is below the magenta, which is a down. Sometimes you have a new up. You can see that it changes color here for this symbol, AZN. If I click on it, you can see that the 
yellow and the magenta, which is the Tenken and the Kijun, have just crossed. If you're looking at the Tenken and the Kijun as the main signal, or that these two lines as the main signal, look for the new up or the new down indicators because those are the ones that will tell you if they've crossed just recently. Otherwise, it will just tell you if they are in a bullish mode or a bearish mode. The ones that are down, for example, I mean, the ones that are up, Adobe is up. You can see that the short term, which is the yellow, is above the midterm, which is the magenta. So we have a bullish mode. That's what up means. Uh, neutral, in this case, uh, this symbol, Charter Communications, you can see that's when the yellow line and the magenta line are right at the same level. Interesting. Neutral, no indication of uh, momentum or trend at that moment. So the price location, very it's, it's calculated very easily. In this case, we're looking at Charter Communications. Uh, right here, it says above cloud, and this is exactly what's happening. The candlesticks are above the cloud. Whenever something is inside the cloud, let's say, for example, here's this symbol Biogen, B-I-I-B. It says in, it's in cloud. And you can see where the price is. The price or the candlesticks are inside the cloud. Not only it gives you the location of the prices in relationship to the cloud, it also tells you the color of the cloud. So whenever you see this orange background, it means that the cloud is bearish. And when you see the blue or the baby blue color, it means that the cloud is bullish. And that's what you see right there as well. Uh, let me see if we see any other indicators in here. No. So we have below, above, and in cloud. Sometimes you see the new. We saw it in the five minute, but it seems that on a daily time frame, we don't have any new below or new above. That would identify, you know, any symbols that are switching the cloud direction. Here we go. There's a new above. This is um, Autodesk. We click it and notice that what happened here is that, see if we can make some sense on this, new above. All right. It just tells you that the current bar recently is closing above the cloud. That's if you're looking for how the candlesticks, you know, cross the cloud, it's giving you that indication right here with the new above or the new below just means that the price bars are exiting the cloud. They were in the cloud, but they're exiting at the moment. And the same happens with the Chico direction. It's just telling where the Chico line is headed. Uh, it's just a very straight momentum indicator. Remember that the Chico line is the one that's moved or offset to the left. So it starts right here, and you can see that the direction of the Chiku is actually moving up if you look at the momentum of that line. So there's multiple concepts here, and in a spreadsheet format, you have this ability of having alignment between all the different aspects of the Ichimoku. If you're looking at the trend direction, at the location of those candlesticks to the cloud, and what the Chiku is telling you, if you have alignment between the three, it just turns into a stronger signal. Another thing that I can do here, you know, I know, I know that I'm getting all these signals on the Ichimoku cloud, but there are some alerting that is going on as well that it's, I don't think it's related to any of this. Let me go ahead and uh, turn this on and see. I just wanna analyze the alert messages. I'm gonna go to edit the Ichimoku cloud, go to the alerts, Enable the alert, say continuous, and say none for the notifications. All right, so you can see that some of them are generating alerts. Let's see what those alerts translate to. Um, we have Adobe giving, up, giving us an alert. Now, I did know what the alert was. A lot of times, you know, you look at an indicator and you're not really sure what the alert is giving you, but in order for you to be sure, what I did is I pulled up the easy language document and I looked for alert. Take a look at whenever a Tenken is crossing over Kijun, you get an alert. So Tenken and Kijun are the first lines that we looked at. That's the calculated values that are plotted on today's bar. But you also have other calculated values. For example, you have a new down, Tenken crossing under Kijun. And I believe there's other alerts as well. You know, here we have another alert. 
close crossed over the top of the cloud recently or the close crossed under the bottom of the cloud recently. Whichever any of these alert conditions are triggered, you're going to see those um, also labeled on your radar screen. So let's go ahead and take a look. So for Adobe, but you can see how the closing price of the bars recently went to the upside. I think that recently looks at five bars in the past. So if you had that, if you've had that crossover in the past five days, it will identify those symbols for you as well. Because you're not lo only looking necessarily for the ones that are crossing right now, which could be very telling, but also at the ones that have crossed recently. That could be very interesting to analyze as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, AMD here. So we have an alert generated. The reason why the alert is generated is because recently we had a crossover to the downside from the cloud. You see how the prices entered the cloud just a few days ago and now they're outside? You know, that could mean something. It's always beneficial to have a chart on the side connected to your radar screen. So you're not only looking at the alert, but you're looking at uh, the chart and seeing how everything is working in relationship to the plots of the Ichimoku. I can do some filtering here. So I can go here and say, uh, select any of the plots of the Ichimoku, go to alert, and then alert true. Notice that my 100 symbols have, have been filtered down to 26 symbols, and those are the ones that are generating a real-time alert on the Ichimoku cloud. So a lot of things to look at, a lot of signals being triggered on this indicator. And again, once you have an understanding of all these lines, um, then you can start using it in your trading, which is uh, the ultimate goal here. So we're not using the Ichimoku cloud or suggesting that the Ichimoku cloud is the only study that you should be looking at. You know, when, um, I always forget the name of the person that created this, um, but what the, the person, this person that created the Ichimoku cloud created this indicator with that intention that it would give you everything you needed. But again, as traders, we always know that looking at other indicators for confirmation is always wise. So um, yes, we're not suggesting that this is the only indicator you should use. You should use it with other studies. Now, which studies to combine it with, that's you know up to you to decide, but for sure you can use it with the volume if that is something that you want to incorporate into this. Uh, yes, the Ichimoku cloud does not look at volume, but it does look at you know support and resistance by looking at price channels. You know, on the highest high and the lowest low, those are very um, very simple forms of support and resistance. Because if you have a highest high price, you know that's where the sellers came in and didn't allow the price to continue to go up. And when you have this lowest low, that's the level at which the buyers came in and didn't let the price you know, continue to drop. So these are very clear levels that are being used in the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, so even though it doesn't use a volume, it does use that concept of where the sellers and the buyers are coming into the market to drive the prices up or down. But um, incorporating volume into the Ichimoku cloud analysis is something that is going to give you an additional perspective and additional insight into the markets, okay? And that's it. That's my presentation for today. Hopefully, this is beneficial to everyone. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for your support of the TradeStation Masterclass, and I hope to see you in a future class. Goodbye, everyone. Great having you.